It's quite some time now since I posted an update on the Z80 computer that I'm designing. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time then you'll know that I've been designing this um, Z80 based computer system and the videos are really to promote a book that I am writing that is really documenting all this, giving all these schematics and detailed explanations for all the circuits. Um, the book's getting quite close to release now, it is uh, way behind schedule, I've been quite busy this year, um, but it's now probably uh, two months away before it will be available. So thanks for anyone that's been patiently waiting for that, it is now very close. Uh, in fact I've decided to um, write a follow-up book as well that will go into a lot of detail for the uh, boot ROM uh, monitor program and the operating system. Um, but as you can see I have advanced the design quite a bit. The last time you saw this we were on to version 2 of the main board. Now on version 3 and really what's been added to this version is, let's grab this circuit, um, we were looking at this um, circuit last time I posted a video and this is for the RS232 transmitter and receiver circuits. They're now built into the board uh, along with some in-out ports. I've tidied up the way that the interrupts works, they're now all tied in to the system so it now operates as a more uh, cohesive system. I will be um, uh, advancing the design of my particular machine quite a bit although this is far as I will take this for the book um, but the core system is now fully functional it has all the elements required to expand this into a fairly complex Z80 computer system and um, I've been adding other things um, over the last few months so I've now got an interface for a floppy disk drive although that's not on this board. On the next board I do for my own system I'll be adding a floppy drive controller along with some um, firmware based control for the, um, the interrupts. I do um, detail that in the book but um, this is as far as I'll take the board um, for the, the book otherwise it will never be released. It's one of these projects that could um, keep going on forever. It's one of the nice things of a project like this, it's an um, unlimited um, source for projects and um, experimentation. Um, but it is now, as you can see, tidied up quite a bit. It is functional. Uh, excuse the flicker if you're seeing that on the camera, it's not um, evident in real life. So what I'll do now is bring the terminal up into the corner of the screen. And I'll also dim the lights a bit in here and try and cut down on the flicker that you're seeing. Okay, so hopefully that's a bit clearer. So um, what I've been doing with the software so far is I've written some test programs. I've written a monitor program that we'll have a look at in a minute. And I've also started playing about with the uh, general structure of the operating system that I'll be using on this. Um, so what we can do is now send the system files from the... Uh, terminal. So I'm just going to send a, uh, a test file from the terminal. It's just uh, a text file that contains nonsense but uh, you'll see it being transferred. The text will appear on the um, CRT and on the terminal it's there's no local echo that's being echoed back from our Z80. So as you can see that works very reliably and it obviously of course works the other way as well. So as you can see that's working fine, I can now um, transfer data and in fact the way I've been developing the software is I've written a, uh, a ROM program that allows um, text files to be sent from the terminal and loaded it into the RAM of the Z80 so it saves me having to mess about uh, with uh, floppy disks or other methods of uh, getting the data into the machine. I don't have to blow a new ROM every time I want to test the code. Um, so apart from 
this um, basic uh, system that's now running. It's very simple, there's no real bells and whistles in it yet. It's not fully functional, this is just a very simple um, it's a very simple setup just for testing the hardware of the system. The next phase and what I will go into in more detail in the next book is uh, exactly how I will go about developing the, um, the boot ROM, the monitor program and the operating system. Um, what I'll do now is just swap the uh, ROM in this machine and we'll have a quick look at how the monitor program appears when the machine boots up into it. So I fitted the ROM into the board that has the uh, monitor program. This would normally be an integral part of the boot ROM and it would most likely be called if the system can't find the boot floppy disk when you power it up and also there'd be a way to get back into the, um, the monitor program from the operating system. But it's very simple, it just has um, help to display this um, help screen and then the usual uh, monitor uh, programs and calls. So I won't uh, demonstrate this fully right at the moment. It's not complete yet, I still have a couple of these that I need to uh, finish off. But it's a relatively simple monitor program and being a Z18 because of the overall design of the system it's extremely easy to implement. In particular the way that the RS232 is implemented because we don't have to do things such as lo lo loading board rates um, accessing internal registers for a UART and that sort of thing. Um, it's extremely simple in terms of writing a monitor program like this because we can just write data directly to the RS-232 and get it directly from the RS-232. We don't need to go through the uh, extra steps required when using a UART. Uh, so as you can see this has advanced now quite a bit. Let's turn the light back on. So as I said this is as far as I will take the design for the book. I need to get the book finished off of course and so I'm just putting the final touches to it and then it will be available. Um, but there will be a follow-up book that will go into uh, the writing of the monitor program, boot ROM and the operating system. I'll also be covering how to get CPM running on this. I have initially had CPM 2.2 partly running on this. It's not um, fully ported over to this particular machine yet. I just wanted to see if it um, was going to work in the way I wanted it to and in particular that the memory map was going to be suitable for it. And that seems to work fairly well but I'll go into that um, in the next book. But um, hopefully you can see the system is now advancing quite nicely. Works extremely well, it's very stable. Um, don't have any issues with it in terms of it um, crashing or hanging so far and um, also if we look at the board using a thermal camera nothing is getting hot all the timing is uh, it's very generous for, for pretty much all of the devices there's no overlap or contention and the book does go into quite a bit of detail as to um, how I achieve that aspect of the design and it is quite important for the reliability of a, a system like this if you're interested, this now draws about 800 milliamps at 5 volts. So, uh, quite an efficient system. It does draw slightly more, of course, when it's doing something, but even so, it never goes over 1 amp and uh, nothing gets hot. All the uh, various parts work nicely together. The DRAM works nice and reliably. Haven't had any issues with that at all. And as you can see, the monitor output is also working extremely nicely as well. Very nice clear output and um, of course the cursor does exactly what it's supposed to. So um, yeah as I say this is now working quite nicely and it shouldn't be too much longer before you can purchase the book.